Hello, everyone. I'm Benny DeCecca, Chief Executive Officer of Validation Institute, and I'm happy to be joined by Sam Jactel, founder and CEO of Able Health. Hello, Sam, and welcome. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here and uh, excited for our conversation. Well, I'm excited that you've decided to join us today because there's so many great things happening at ABLE. I'd like to start out by congratulating on your outcomes validation for significantly helping people suffering from Crohn's ulcerative colitis and irritable bowel syndrome. It is so incredible. So let's dive right in. How does the ABLE Health platform help address issues impacting the GI community like healthcare availability, equity, and affordability across a large and geographical diverse patient population? Yeah, uh, big question. So perhaps the easiest way to kind of illustrate it is uh, actually my own patient journey. So I've lived with uh, ulcerative colitis for about 10 years. Um, I've seen all the best doctors. I've been able to afford all the best care. And despite uh, all of that, I've actually fallen out of remission about five times in the last 10 years. Um, unfortunately, that journey is really actually quite common in the and IBS population. Um, and it turns out that people like me are a lot more prevalent than you would expect. And we cost a lot of money. Um, just to kind of throw out a few statistics to put that into perspective. So there's approximately two times as many GI patients as there are diabetics in the United States. We generate on aggregate around $140 billion of direct medical spend, which is more than mental health, trauma, and heart disease. And so uh, people like myself are large burdens from a financial standpoint. Turns out that we're also not that productive uh, and we're absent quite a bit from our workplaces. And so we uh, are typically absent about three to four days a month and then approximately six uh, additional days per month, we are not that present or productive. And so the challenge is that not only are we driving a huge amount of claims cost, we're also driving a huge amount of claims volume and the adjacencies um, are approximately you know, a third of each month where we're not being as productive. So you look at that, it's staggering a rate um, and you go, why aren't these patients feeling better? Because uh, the quality of life, kind of sucks. Um, patients would be willing to sacrifice approximately 15 years of their remaining life expectancy for a cure today that doesn't exist. And I think the answer to this is that um, we are actually only treating part of the patient with our current standard of care. So when you go into the clinic, uh, you take the drugs, that is the, the standard of care. It's really important. Unfortunately, it's uh, those drugs alone are not uh, you know, substantially effective by themselves. We live 99% of our lives as patients outside of the clinic. And there are two things that are really important for us to do as GI patients that have therapeutic potential. Those two things are dietary therapy, and the other one is psychological management as well. These are and conditions. So you've got to take your drugs and do the diet and do the psychology. But the reality is that there's zero support the second you walk out of the clinic for the things you have to do beyond the pill. And so ABLE is a tool I wish had existed when I was diagnosed. We are a comprehensive ecosystem of support beyond the pill. Concretely, two clinically validated programs, one on precision nutrition, and we'll be launching one on precision psychology very soon. The validation that we've gotten is for our nutrition program, which is a 12 to 16 week program that guides people to identify and eliminate the foods that are generating their symptoms or exacerbating their symptoms. Um, and we kind of hold their hand with a coach on the other side, nutritionist, We've also built uh, nutrition tools for the so what, right? So finding a trigger food is important. Being able to implement that on a daily basis, changing the way you buy groceries, the way that you cook, and ultimately you know, adhere to those recommendations is really important. Also considering cultural competency, right? And so we've developed a database that covers around 95% of grocery items on shelves across the United States, uh, as well as two and a half million recipes that we can filter at the ingredient level. And that's not just to filter and show compatible items based on our recommendations, for example, you know, onions and garlic being poorly tolerated by a lot of GI patients, but also what if you're hypertensive and need to eat low sodium or you're kosher or you're allergic to eggs, right? We have about 60 different variables we can filter for. And so what that means is that we are considering social determinants of health um, in our recommendations. So it's culturally competent care. And the way that we have kind of created the company is that we can we can plug in gaps in care 
for all patients, regardless of where they get their care. So that kind of, I hope that addresses a little bit your your question. It does, and 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 I have to say, you know, the best CEO and founders are people that have experienced this personally, and I appreciate you sharing that experience with us because it's so near and dear to you. Um, you know, let's talk a little bit about what was the thought process behind clinical validation of Able Health um, and commercializing the platform, and how do you feel um, this sets the company apart from digital health ecosystem? So Look, can- I think these days, yeah, no, it's, it's a good question. It's a really important question. I actually really love your guys' positioning in the market as well. I think the, the challenge that we see in this marketplace is that there's a proliferation of digital tools. Um, and there are a lot of claims, but there is a mismatch between the clinical evidence that backs those claims up. Um, and so I think one of the things that was really important to us is so we uh, did not take a dollar from anyone until we had published peer reviewed clinical research that showed that we improved outcomes for patients with IBD and IBS. That was really important to us. Um, but not everyone reads the clinical literature. And I think it's really important to be able to translate that evidence on outcomes, on adherence, on engagement, and uh, put it in a way that can be understood. Um, and so that's, that's you know, we, we really love that partnership with you guys to be able to, to do those and have the external validation where you guys have looked at our data independently as well. So you have that trust um, and that we're putting our money where our mouth is. Because I think when we think about this space, not only do we think that this is differentiating, and to be honest, should be table stakes. As a patient and a prior clinical researcher, I think that's table stakes is prove what you're trying to demonstrate. The other element is that when, when you put yourself in the shoes of a broker, a TPA, an insurer, an employer that has to make decisions um, for the benefit of their employees or members, um, how do you make that decision? Is it the fancy marketing or at the end of the day, is it the ROI you're generating and the outcomes that you're improving for your patients? And we think that that's really important. And so all of our uh, conversations start with, here's the evidence. Let's have a conversation around how we might be able to help your population. That's great. And how how does the Able Health app extend care beyond the four walls of a clinic and create a fully integrated omni-channel experience for employers and insurers? It's something that we're very actually proud of. So we don't disintermediate the physician. So we're not just kind of a, a, a cookie cutter, copy and paste telehealth platform. And what that allows us to do is actually integrate at every point inside the infrastructure and ecosystem that an employer or TPA broker or insurer has created for their members. So for example, we integrate at the primary care site. Uh, we integrate with the gastroenterologist as an extra tool in the clinical toolbox. We are also available direct to consumer. And so what we're able to do is uh, play really nicely in, in like an easy button manner to integrate into that ecosystem that already exists. So for example, if you've got an employer, that employer already has a teleprimary care group, right? We can integrate into that telecare primary care group where the physician or clinician um, can be some that care coordinator essentially to say, oh, Sam is a good candidate, here is able, and by the way, it's covered within that ecosystem. We can also find those individuals with our direct-to-consumer channel and connect that all the way to the top from partnered claims analysis. And when you connect all of those three things together, first of all, it's very easy to implement. Second of all, then you're able to make decisions on data, right? Um, On are we able to find the right patients? Are we able to engage them long-term? And are we able to deliver the ROI that that we all together want to deliver? Um, And that's a unique value proposition that we have, which is that we don't uh, we don't compete with any of the systems that exist. We just integrate very seamlessly. And can I ask, why did you think being validated was important? Look, I think uh, for a couple reasons. One is, um, I think the credibility guarantee is really important. So for us, that allows us to put our money where our mouth is, right? Don't just take our word for it. Don't just read our papers. This is something that we stand by and that we have made the investment to have someone external to us, external to even the journals that we've been published in with our 13 peer-reviewed publications, but having an external uh, uh, ecosystem of health economists, 
uh, look at our data and evaluate it. Um, I think the other element is it's really sometimes valuable to have another uh, impartial party in that room in those conversations with employers, CPAs, et cetera, to say, look, here's the research. It's been published. It's been validated by our peers in the clinical area. It has also been validated by our peers in the health economics area, right? Um, and I come from a background in pharma consulting as well. So the health economics outcomes research is a huge, that's the linchpin of the whole value dossier. And so having those two things together, I think is it makes a whole package that I think is really important um, and that we would like to, to, to kind of use to differentiate what we're, what we're doing and, and prove that we can do what we think we can do for the patient population. Oh, that's great. Well, you proved it. And um, do you have any advice for companies considering validation? I I am like unabashedly a fan of evidence, right? Like I think everybody should be generating the evidence, independently evaluating and publishing it, right? Uh, we do all three of those things. It's scary uh, because science is such that the outcome is hard to predict before, right? And so I think it's really important for everybody to, to basically keep a scientific mindset, test and validate hypotheses, publish it so that a rising tide does float all boats. And you know, we think that, that we've been able to, to help pioneer in there. Um, and and you know, we very much appreciate your guys' partnership in that. And uh, yeah, be brave, do it, prove it. I love it. Well, that's great. And for anyone out there that wants to learn more about Able Health, you can go to validationinstitute.com and read their validation report. Sam, thank you very much for taking the time today to meet with me and discuss this. It's been fantastic. And I hope you have a great day. Absolutely. Thank you for your partnership. And you know, we'd love to, to work with other enterprise clients to get the care that patients like me need uh, on a daily basis. That's great. And thank you again.